Hello, my name is Kate Guthrie Caruso and I'm the scientist for Margie MOOC headquarters. If you're new to our MOOC, it is Rhetoric and Composition, the Persuasive Power of Video Games as Paratext. Today I'm going to be doing a training on MLA formatting in text citations, and this is a basic training. Don't worry, I'm going to be covering a lot of information quickly. You can access my slideshow online at the link right here, um, bit.ly forward slash rgmla1. Okay. We'll also, um, there's a lot of information we won't get to today, for instance, the Works Cited page. So I highly recommend that you bookmark in your, um, on your computer um, the Purdue OWL MLA website. Um, and so I've given you a link. It's bit.ly forward slash Purdue MLA. All right, so why use MLA format? First off, it's the Modern Language Association format. And basically, it gives us a standardized citation method. We want to make sure we're all using the same language when we're doing research. Okay, And the citation tells readers where your information actually came from. And finally, it gives credit to the writer, agency, etc. that you borrowed your ideas or your words from. All right, so when do I need to cite? There are three times that you really need to cite. Okay, first off, when you summarize a text, when you paraphrase a section of a text, or when you directly quote from that text. Okay, and we're going to cover these all, th all three more in depth. So first off, what is summary? A summary includes the thesis or the main idea and the main points of a text, and you rewrite that in your own words. A summary is much shorter than the original text. So for instance, if I was going to go ahead and summarize a video game, for instance, Journey, one of the games that we're playing for our um, MOOC, you wouldn't spend two and a half to three hours, which is the average playtime for that uh, video game, retelling what the story is to your friends. Instead, you would pick out what you thought were the major points and what you thought the meaning of that video game was. That would be a summary. Okay. Paraphrasing is a little bit different, and students often confuse these two. Okay, so paraphrasing restates the text idea in about the same number of words as the original. You'll generally see paraphrases, for instance, if you're wanting to bring in um, data. Okay. Um, when, a, when you look at a paraphrase, it's the information that's important. Okay. And you need to maintain the original meaning from that text. So when you paraphrase, it's the, the um, meaning or the information that's important. Next, when you directly quote, okay, you're going to actually want to think about the words. If the words are important, for instance, you're, you're picking someone who's an expert in the field, then of course their words are going to be important. Or you really liked, for instance, the way something was worded in an article. Then you are directly quoting it. Okay, So that's word for word. Okay, And in a direct quote, um, you must put that in quotation marks. Okay, So um, the quote anything word for word will go inside of those quotation marks. All right, so there's some rules with citation. Okay, All three of the types of information that I just talked about, summary, paraphrase, and quoting, must be cited in MLA format. Okay. Number two, most research should have a signal phrase. Number three, in MLA format, all research must have the MLA in text citation. And finally, all research should have an explanation or analysis that ties that um, research to your argument. Okay, we're going to talk about all of these in more depth. So first off, the signal phrase. Okay, the signal phrase usually introduces your quote, paraphrase, or summary. Um, and when that happens, I like to call it a lead-in. It's leading into your quote. It's giving us some context before you just drop the quote in. You don't really ever want to just drop a quote into your essay without giving us some information. OK, 
Okay. Occasionally, you'll find um, your signal phrase in the middle of a sentence, so you may break your, your quote or your paraphrase, um, or at the end of the sentence. So you'll end your quotation or your paraphrase and then give us the signal phrase. Okay. And in a signal phrase, it can include and should include most of the following. Either the author, okay, and not just the author, um, but who they are. I don't want to just say Joe Schmo. Okay, nobody knows who Joe Schmo is. I would want to say Joe Schmo, um, a game design um, expert from the University of blah blah, and then all of a sudden we get credibility from the source that we're bringing in. Okay, or the title of the text. Sometimes you'll just bring in the title of the text. Occasionally you'll bring in stuff that doesn't have an author, for instance. Okay, and finally you'll want to give some context for the quote. Um, and you'll usually bridge that with a verb. Okay. So, a signal phrase in practice. Um, this is a quotation from one of the readings for this week. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and read the signal phrase I wrote and the quote. Okay. Christine Champagne, a journalist with a specialty in creative digital media, points out with the advent of Pac-Man, quote, for the first time you had women in arcades and you had kids, both boys and girls, in these arcades that were typically full of older teens and adult males. It fundamentally changed the dialogue and the social construct that arcades had made. Okay, So in this instance, the signal phrase, I mentioned both the author, Christine Champagne, and the context, okay, um, the advent of Pac-Man, as well as giving a verb. Christine Champagne points, okay, so that's bridging between um, my context and my author. Okay, next, the length of the quote or the paraphrase. Okay, remember, when you are doing research, when you're including research into any kind of an essay or a paragraph, it supports your argument. It is not your argument. Okay. Otherwise, I would just go read the original text. So whatever you're doing, you want it to support that. So you keep that in mind with length. Okay. In general, for a short paper, a paragraph, or a three to five page paper, even slightly longer than that, you really don't want to quote more than four lines long when, you're, when you've typed it out. Okay. Anything more than four lines long actually becomes what's called a block quote, and it requires a different kind of formatting. Because we are mainly writing short essays for this MOOC, I'm not going to be covering block quotes in this tutorial. If you are interested, please click on the Purdue link and they can give you further information. Okay, And then also the length of your quote, you also want to keep it short because it ties in with your explanation or analysis, that number four that I talked about earlier, and we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so some helpful hints for quotes. Okay, first off, to shorten a quote within a quote, um, so let's say it was pretty long and you want to use just portions of it, use ellipses, okay? So it's those three dots. And in between each period, okay, you will actually put a space in the MLA formatting. Okay, use four if you are jumping multiple sentences. So three if you are, are bridging together one sentence together that you're cutting out a portion of, four if you're bridging multiple sentences together. Okay. If you need to clarify within a quote, use brackets. Okay, so a bracket looks just like this. Okay, in place of the vague word. Um, anything in brackets signifies your clarification. So for example, if the quote says they, and really it means Americans, and we don't know that context, you can simply replace they with Americans, as I did right here, and readers will know that you inputted that in and you gave that clarification. Okay, so why do in-text citations? First off, they give credit to the author who composed the text or the agency who conducted the research. Next, it adds credibility to your writing. Okay, in other words, it adds ethos. This is really important. You want to be able to back up what you're doing or what you're arguing. Number three, it signals readers to look at the Works Cited page for full text information. Your in-text citations do not include everything about your article. Your Works Cited page should include all of the relevant information so readers could then go and look up um, that article. 
or video game or any other text. Okay, and number four, when paraphrasing or summarizing, it clarifies what is not your own ideas or arguments. Because paraphrases and summaries do not go in quotation marks, this is particularly important. You want to make sure you're giving credit to whoever came up with those ideas. Okay, in-text citation rules. Okay, so your in-text citation, first you'll have your signal phrase, then you'll have your quote or your paraphrase, and then finally um, you'll have your actual in-text MLA citation. Okay, so in that it includes the author's last name and page number in the parentheses at the end of the sentence. Okay, um, so even if your quote ends and then you do your signal phrase, you still put your, your parentheses at the end of the sentence. Okay, so I would do my quote, okay, in quotation marks, and then I have these parentheses and I have the author's last name and a page number. Okay, notice here there's no comma in between the last name and the page number. There's no period, page number, anything. Okay, and the period goes after the parentheses. You are essentially ending the full sentence with that citation. That citation belongs to that sentence. So make sure your period goes after. Okay, now sometimes you'll see that there is some kind of um, uh, an exclamation point, uh, uh, an ellipses, or a question mark at the end of your quote, you can leave that end, and then at the end you still put a period that signifies that it goes with it. So, for example, and this would be a terrible quote, but if I was going to say, quote somebody saying, I'm so excited, then I would give my citation, and then I would put the period. So the exclamation point is left, and the period is added. Okay. So an in-text citation example, this is the exact same quote that I used earlier. Um, I took out the signal phrase, let's pretend that we made up a different one. The basic citation, in-text citation, would be to use Christine Champagne, is the author, remember. So we would use her last name, and then we would use the page number, okay, whatever page it came from, and then I'd have my period, okay. So. When the basic in-text in citation rules vary, there are some variations, okay? So if the author's last name shows up in, in your signal phrase, then you don't need to include it in the parentheses, just the author's last name. You would still need a page number, okay? Number two, if there's no page number, which happens to be the case with many web pages, and we're using many web pages for this MOOC in terms of our research, then you don't need to include a page number. Okay, and um, finally, um, if there is no author, include the title of the article, okay? Um, and you can actually shorten that to the first few recognizable words. Don't use just the or and, okay? You want to make it long enough so that when readers see that and they go to your Works Cited page, they can make that direct correlation that that text belongs to that um, citation. Okay, so the citation in practice again, okay? This is back with my original. Um, a signal phrase, okay? Um, I have no parentheses at the end. The reason is because I have Christine Champagne. Champagne is the last name, author's last name shows up in the signal phrase, and it's actually from a web page, so there is no page numbers, okay? So then my period goes inside and I am my quotation marks, okay? If this varies, okay, um, then we would see a little bit different. So let's say um, I didn't, in my signal phrase, give the author's name or the title. So I revised it and I, instead of saying all of that, I just said, with the advent of Pac-Man, quote. Okay, and then I gave my quote. For this one, then I need to make sure that Christine Champagne gets credit. Okay, she is the author. So at the end, I add parentheses, Champagne, period. Okay, and this would actually go right up here. Um, because of the formatting, Oop, because of the formatting of this, it, it got pushed down, okay? Um, on this one, okay, let's say there is no author of the text, okay? So let's say we don't know who wrote it, it wasn't Christine Champagne, okay? So then I would give the name of the article itself, and this is actually from How Pac-Man Changed Games and Culture, okay? So I shortened it, How Pac-Man. That's gonna give us enough information so when I go to the Works Cited page, I know that this is the full article. Okay, make sure you have a Works Cited page attached if you do this. Neither of these had page numbers, again, because they were from a website. Okay, 
So when in doubt, check your reference guide. MLA formatting is impossible to memorize, so don't try and do it. Okay, this Purdue website, I absolutely recommend. There are many other great ones out there as well. All right, finally, the very last step you have to do after you have the actual MLA and text citation, so those parentheses, is you need to have explanation or analysis and or analysis. Okay, this comes after your quote or your paraphrase, and yes, you need it for both. Okay, remember, both are working to help prove your argument, so you need to have your own voice, your own explanation or analysis. Okay, and it should be, as a general rule of thumb, equal or longer than the text you paraphrased or you quoted. Okay, so um, if it's four lines long, then you should have at least four lines of explanation and analysis. Finally, it connects the reader to your topic argument and or your thesis argument. Like I said, research is not your argument. It is supporting your argument. So without this explanation and analysis, your research is not helping you. Okay. Answer the question, why is this research important to my argument? I will say that students often think that the research speaks for itself, but people draw different conclusions. You want to be very clear in explaining how this connects. Okay, so review. Okay, all in-text research should include a signal phrase with the author, title, and or context. Number two, the quote or paraphrase itself. Number three, the in-text citation, that's that parentheses with the last name and the page number or the, the, the changes based on, on your situation. And number four, an explanation and a an analysis that is equal or longer, err on the side of longer, to the text you actually quoted or paraphrased. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Kate Guthrie Caruso. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. My email is listed as well as my Twitter account, and you can access the slideshow at your leisure. Thank you.